All right, welcome to another video for the One Good Road here, showing you all the good roads to take. So, ironically, we'll be creating a route for those roads for you to take. Um, <laughs> yeah, today in this video, I wanted to talk about um, how to create your own bicycle routes. Uh, I get this comment quite a few times on my Facebook stuff and on YouTube, and I wanted to just make a whole full-fledged video about it. I already made a how to make your own cycling routes, but now I wanted like discuss more in depth on how to create um, the routes and also plan them a little bit um, and that's actually this is like how I do it but obviously you will have to discover and you will create your own way a lot of people for example will just go to Google Maps and they will just type in um, whatever town they're going to uh, as their destination and then done pretty much I don't really like doing that anymore because I like to know what's going to come up ahead so I can plan a little bit better but then my philosophy is that you still can't plan everything, um, which is, you know, the irony, but, uh, and also the adventure. Anyway, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to type in Nelson, which is, uh, as I've been using it as, as an example lately. And then we're going to go directions from Nelson to, let's say, Greymouth. Boom, done. So, now that's great, that's great and handy and all, but like I said, that's not really what I would recommend. It's, it's very basic and it's a huge overview. Like this is like 300 Ks, right? Um, so, for example, one of the main things you're gonna do already, I would suggest, is you click on the little dude down there and you can start to get these blue lines popping up all over the place. Now, let me zoom out a little bit further and give you an idea of what this is. This is Google Street View. Now, this is one of the most amazing features, I think, of Google Maps in general, is that you're able to see what the actual damn road's gonna look like. For example, Highway 6, I take the little dude, he goes straight down onto the road, and there we go. I can see what the road's gonna be like. I can see if there's gonna be a little bit of shoulder or shoulder, if not of any. Um, I can see what the asphalt's gonna look like. I can see what the scenery's gonna look like. And some days they even have, or sometimes they have uh, different years that they've recorded the route. So for example, I'm gonna click on the Kaikoura Road now um, and I can see what the scenery is gonna look like. And then Street View can go back in time and change to different days. I was hoping it would show gray weather, but anyway, you get the point. Um, so immediately, right off the bat, that to me is a really handy, handy feature. And it allows you to see if you can see if there are any smaller roads to take around these areas here. Um, but anywho, that's, that's one of them. And then the next amazing thing, which not a lot of mapping systems have, is Google Satellite Image. I think a lot of us use this and take this for granted because it allows us to just see what the whole damn world looks like these days from the comfort of our homes. Um, but any for, for bicycle touring, it's, it's just a must. It's so handy. Um, for example, uh, let's zoom in over here and we can see what the road's going to look like up here. We can even see if there are any roads leading away from the main road. So we know that this Highway 6 along here is is a main road it even comes up on google street view but we can see that there's a smaller road going up along here which is pretty cool now i'm getting a bit lost because i'm just seeing that there's a lot of mountains here so where am i now i can zoom out again and change to the regular map and i see oh there's a small little white road going up along here well there should be a white road i don't know where it is oh it's up here that's i'm looking at the wrong place there we go so there's another little white road going up along here um so yeah, that, that to me is really, really handy and that allows you to find a lot of these hidden gems which you might not have been able to see before. Now sometimes these routes, pretty much most routes are recorded and Google Maps is a bit lacking when it comes to finding these roads. For example, I'm zoomed in quite far over here and this just not showing any roads around here. Like there's just nothing, that's what it says. Now OpenStreetMap, now OpenStreetMaps is a bit like an open source version of Google Maps. It allows us that uh, any developer can download this and start using their maps, I think. And then they've created applications which can run these maps. So I will get onto OpenStreetMaps, the, the actual uh, application, which you can download and use on Android and iOS. I'll talk about that in one second. But the OpenStreetMaps you can still use on your 
computer, um, and it's it's all free, like Google Maps is. Um, but the nice thing is we have different layers and maps that we can uh, choose and integrate. For example, we're on the standard map right now. If I change this to the cycle map, I get cycling recommended stuff instead. So I'm like, oh, there's a cycle route going along here from Blenheim all the way down to, uh, towards Christchurch. And that, by the way, this is a stunning area. This is so beautiful around here. Um, by the way, this this West Coast Road, I don't know what it's saying as that as a cycle route. That's a main road, guys. Just want to point that out. Um, but anyway, um, this all depends on what kind of cycling you want to do. If you're going to have, I'll have to get into this in a minute, but if you're going to have a mountain bike versus a road bike, you probably won't need to do as much planning as I'm suggesting because road biking, you can just stick to the highways and you're, you're essentially going to follow the exact route. There's cars, there's going to be gas stations, there's going to be shops, motels, people, towns. Now, if you go more and more into the wilderness and you take these more country roads, like I'm suggesting, you need to plan it a lot more on what you're going to take. Um, now, we are leaving the Google Maps realm. I mean, I'm not actually showing you that, for example, you can see a lot more routes. I forgot to mention that. Um, we zoom in here and come on, load them. I know there are roads here. There we go. Now I'm starting to see roads around here. You see? Well, they're not roads. They're all just forestry little roads. Um, you need to do your research on like Google's if, if they are even uh, recommended. See if someone else has cycled the route. I'll show you that in a minute. Um, you can also just Google search and see if it's a private road or not and ask locals when you're cycling through there. Um, but yeah, so now... This is when Ride with GPS comes in, and this is how you can create your own route. Um, and what we're going to do is on the menu on the top here, we're going to click Plan. Now, let's say, like I said, I wanted to go from Nelson to uh, Greymouth on the west coast of, of New Zealand. Um, so we've got Nelson, I'll type in New Zealand. Uh, I keep spelling everything wrong. Okay, now I've got my starting point. And let's say I want to go down to Greymouth. I don't know why I've been using Greymouth all the time. It's not that good of a town. The coast is, the west coast is beautiful though. Um, now again, this is the official route, which it's suggesting. By the way, you can also use satellite images. All right, this is, this is the amazing thing with Ride with GPS. It basically takes every map you can think of and then you can overlay it as a layer and then create your own bike route. So it's so cool. So if we tap the right over here and we can use satellite, we can use OpenStreetMaps, we can use the OpenStreetMaps cycle version. So now, for example, I'm gonna click the cycle version and see what cycling routes there are around there. Oh, there's kind of a few around there. So let's say I wanna follow that blue road there. I wanna uh, take this country road up here. Oh, this looks quite nice. It looks like a good path. Um, but now I'm kind of losing track. I don't know where the main roads are. So I just changed back to Google Maps. Ta-da, now it's changed back. And then it's like, oh, there's a little white road along there. Maybe I can use that. Ta-da, there we go. So now I'm creating my routes, which essentially takes me on the most quietest, amazing roads in the world. And there's no traffic, which is really cool. And then we still take the main roads to see all the beautiful stuff that most tourists will see. Um, you can also draw lines with this one. So let's say if there's a road which you know exists and you've ridden on, you can draw it if it's not on the actual thing. You can add po uh, points of interest, which is like POI here, um, and so on and so forth. And you can change it from walking, cycling, and driving. So that's like if you're planning a route on Google Maps and you've got driving, walking, cycling, it's the same thing like as you're drawing it out in here. And you can even change the line of the color which is the lines color, which is so handy. Like if you're going over the, the ferry, for example, and you don't really want to show that you've been obviously cycling on the ferry, then change it to black, for example, or blue or whatever. And then you can change it back to red. Uh, or if there's a really stunning scenic part, you could change that for green, for example, or something like that to highlight it and points of interest along the way, yada, yada, yada. You get my point. So now let's say I want to follow this route. I want to put this on my phone. That's when the open street maps navigation comes in. So you can download these maps offline onto your mobile phone and you can download and use the GPX files. I'll explain how that works. The GPX file you can run on Garmin's and stuff like that. So this is open source, bicycle friendly, 
uh, unlimited maps, yada, 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 offline. Um, and I'll overlay, um, over this, over this video, I will show you me, me using OpenStreetMaps, um, and you'll get an idea of, uh, I'll, I'll leave a link in the description to, to, to have a look at me using Google Maps. I'll leave a little I card in the top right if you want to click that video. Um, so anyway, let's say we want to export this file, and I want to be able to follow this on my phone. We click Save, and I'm going to type in Nelson to Greymouth, which I've already written in too many times that I can remember today. Uh, and then we're going to write just me as I want to keep it private. So you can either say yes, I've already done this route or no. Uh, no, we'll put it in the route section and yes, we'll put it in the uh, ride section of uh, Ride with GPS. You see there's routes and rides up in the menu bar over here. So now it's saving the route. We just wait a little bit and it's going to make it any minute. Now, there we go. View your route here. Boom. Okay, so now we can go over to the export page, which is, uh, so we're, we've saved the file now, at, or the route, and now we go to the export and we go into GPX track, and uh, that's it. That's how we just click this button right there, um, and then we can export this and, and download it straight onto our mobile phones. And then I'll show you a little uh, uh, overlay of me using the Tor Aurora Tora, whatever it's called, um, as an example. Um, to show that you can then run and follow the track on your mobile phone, which is really, really awesome. Now, before I leave this video, because that's how you obviously create the custom route, I want to throw in some other uh, useful tips on how I uh, find out about bicycle touring in another country. So, for example, before coming to New Zealand, I wanted to see if there was anyone else who's already done this route before. Um, and I, I found it a little bit tricky, but for example, there's this guy uh, who's from Holland and he's also ridden uh, the from top to bottom of New Zealand. And he's actually made an entire video collection of, of him touring from top to bottom and yeah, it's pretty cool. I recommend it if you can check out the Dutch seaman over here. He also does sailing. Anyway, so he's left in the description, uh, here's my planned route. So then I click on this, and this leads me to Google My Maps. Google My Maps is really cool if you want to share maps, but I won't get into this video on how to do that. Um, I'm just showing you how to create these stuff yourself, and if you want to share it with people, then maybe this is a good way to use it through Google My Maps. Um, anyway, he's, I assume, downloaded the official route of New Zealand from top to bottom, this GPX file over here, and overlaid it over his route, and then added in his official routes, or his routes that he's done as well. Um, and that's, that's it. That's what I really recommend if you want to try and see if anyone else has done the route, and you can download this, this, and then start using it on your phone, for example. And also, by watching other people's videos, you can get an idea of what you're going to see along the way. There's tons of videos of New Zealand, actually. There's just, like, actually way too many. But, um, anyway, that's, you know, that's a little uh, tidbit for you. Uh, research before you go. Um, another thing is that you can't really plan anything, but um, okay, for example, let's say I want to know when the next town will be. So let's go over to the Nelson Greymouth thing again and see if it'll bring up my markers on my map of how many k's it is the next town. There we go. So now as I zoom in, it's showing me what the markers are. So, I now know that Richmond is about, or let's say I start off the day, I pick up my food at uh, 10Ks out of Richmond, and I find that there's a shop around there. The next town will probably be Tapawera. Yeah, this is the next town. So now, if I go over to Google Maps, and what I can do is I can type in, let's say, gas stations. That's where I can pick up food, at least. Um, now, Tapawera comes up, and it says there's a gas station there. Perfect. So now I know there's one there. How many k's is that between? Oh, roughly for for argument's sake, this says 65 k's. 10 k's of that, it's 55 k's out of Richmond. So now I know how much food I'm going to take. In my opinion, what you should do as a as a ground basis, depending on where you are. For example, if you're in Australia or if you're in an area where water is so bloody scarce, you're going to have to carry five liters or more water and just carry enough water for the entire day to sustain yourself. Um, but in certain countries like New Zealand or the UK or 
Europe, you can pretty much find water uh, as you go throughout the entire country, throughout the entire days. Um, so I would say that you can probably get away with carrying 1.5 to 1 liter of water a day, depending on who you are and how much water you want to have. Um, but for New Zealand, it's also the same thing. But uh, this 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 comes to my other point that, that what you should do is probably carry enough food for the entire day, but not necessarily uh, less than that. I personally wouldn't carry it for every hour or so and then refuel at the next place. I would just carry enough food for the entire day, maybe for the next day, maybe even for three days, and then I don't have to think about getting to the next shop. And that way I can, it, honestly, it really depends on how you tour. If you're gonna be clicking on this video, you're probably wanting to take the back roads and take your mountain bike or your cyclocross bike or your touring bike even onto a lot of the smaller roads. Um, and you can also actually find out if they're paved or not with this Google satellite image. That's another suggestion or with Google Street View. Um, anyway, th th this is the best suggestions I can give. Uh, and I think I'm going to leave the video pretty much at that. A small side note that I want to add is that if you want to use uh, or find accommodation along the way, um, you can either stay at motels and campgrounds, but what I would really recommend is that you can maybe stay with locals. So warmshowers.org, I'll leave a link, all the links will be in the description. Um, we'll, you can find a host, uh, start cycling, um, and they might be able to host you along your way. Um, and then vice versa, when you're able to host, you can host them when they come back to your country, for example. It's a really cool, great way to meet people and stay with locals. And couchsurfing.org is also the same thing as well. It's the same sort of website, and, and you, it gives you a pin and, or, or a map of where that person is. And then you can just see if that's along your route as you're cycling along and contact them through email or uh, through their phone number or whatnot. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, good luck on your tours um, and with accommodation. Um, I know it's a tough thing to find, but just always ask around for the locals and keep searching on Google Maps and you'll probably find something eventually. Um, if you have any questions on how else you want to plan out your routes, um, just leave them down in the comments below. Um, I'll see if I can help you down there. Um, but that that's pretty much it. To be honest, it all depends on you and what what you want to do as you plan out through through whatever country and what you want to see along the way. Do you want to write now a full itinerary of where you want to go and how many kilometers you want to do every day? Or do you want to just see how many kilometers you want to do a day and then just select the entire route? Or do you want to just say, fuck it, I'm just going to go wherever I'm going to go and then see how many kilometers or whatever I end up doing throughout my entire country? Um, then you can also do that. So it really depends on who you are. Um, and this, this is me, you do you, and that's pretty much it. I hope you guys enjoyed this video on how to create your own route and some little suggestions here and there. Uh, leave a like, subscribe, uh, and check out the other videos on the best cycling apps to use on your smartphone. You might find those useful. Um, and yeah, that's it. So see you guys in the next video.